Hello students. So I thought we would do a quick example of the arithmetic mean of grouped data. So arithmetic mean, of course, we're calculating the average, but this time we are using grouped data. In other words, we don't have the long listing of data. This typically happens in an example, like the one the book provided here, of Wittner Autoplex. Do you remember this? I've, I've kind of spoiled it there, so let me uh, remove that. But what do you call this particular table when I have a listing of some labels and then a count of how often or how frequent this listing of domestic or this listing of foreign occurred, well, of course, we call this a frequency table, right? Now, what you're used to after coming out of Chapter 2 is probably a table that looks like this. I've switched into Excel here, and, and hopefully you can see this. Let me move some things around here. Okay, and somebody would have gone through the invoices and said, okay, this is a domestic car, a domestic, a foreign one, a couple foreigns here, domestic, foreign, and they just literally wrote down the what? The nominal data right but then they had to organize that now they might have used a tool like Excel to do something like this now I'm using the Excel count if function and I've simply told it told Excel to count every time it sees the word domestic in this list or to count every time it sees the word foreign so now that I have this nice count what I might be tempted to do um, I'm gonna use the word throw away the raw data now in truth we probably would never throw it away but it may become inconvenient to access if you think of all the packages that are shipped in a given day or all the inventory that is is sold in a grocery store um, you know we can oftentimes be talking about a lot a lot of data so it may not be convenient for us to return to the original listing now this is nominal data so of course we could not calculate an average or, or anything like that but um, my point is once we summarize the data we have this frequency table we may want to ask further questions okay so let me kind of continue on the question that my young executives ask here is, so what do we do if we have a frequency table, but we don't have the mean, a sample mean of the data? How do we calculate a sample mean, uh, the average of a sample, right, after we've kind of thrown away or it's become inconvenient to access the raw data? Well, we use this formula. Now, as we study business statistics, there's something that's really important to understand. We're going to have a lot of formulas. The key is to know when to apply the specific formula. We did not have to derive this formula. We didn't start with all these theorems and, you know, theory and go through and calculate or a hypothesis, I'm sorry, and go through the, theor the work to prove it to be a theory but we stand on the shoulders of others and we accept this as the formula but that means we have a responsibility to understand when to use the appropriate formula so conditions applied you probably know that to calculate any old average you take the values you sum them and then you divide by a count of the number of values right the number of observations well that's not the situation that we have here the situation that we have here is that we have a grouped amount of data so to calculate x bar and that means the sample mean of grouped look how the formula specifies of grouped data this capital Look, an E is actually the Greek letter S is sigma. Maybe I can make that just a little bigger so you can see that. Little f means frequency. Well, you know what the frequency is, right? Frequency is simply the count. Big capital M is the midpoint of the class. In other words, the value that literally lies in the middle. So what are we going to do on the top? The order of operations tells us that we're going to take the frequency, the count, and we're going to multiply it by the midpoint value. We're going to do that for each and every class in our frequency table. Only after we have multiplied every single frequency by its associated midpoint, then we're going to sum up those values, and then we're going to divide by the count of all those values. After all, we know the frequency so we can get the total count, right? Okay, so let's do it. 
So we're going to go to our example here. I'm using our from our textbook the Whitner Autoplex example and I'm going to go on to the next slide and I'm sorry I need to adjust that just a little bit. Here is a sample of a frequency table. Okay, now we've thrown away the raw data, but what we know is that cars that were within the 15,000 to less than 18,000 price range, we sold eight of those. You can go through and see from 18,000 to less than 21,000, this is how many we sold. Just a basic frequency table. But then it occurs to us that we would like to know the arithmetic mean, right? So what we have to do is we need to follow the steps of our formula. Now here's our formula down here and this is a very concise way of reading you know the instructions of what I'm supposed to do. It's like following a recipe, right? I need to find the frequency. Well I have those, I have those frequencies and I need to find the midpoint. That's what this is telling us. Capital M, remember we said, is the midpoint. Well from 15 to 18,000, 18 minus 15, that's 3 or 3,000. Now I want to check all my classes to, con to ensure that that's a consistent measure. Yep, 3,000, 3,000, yep, yep. That looks like it's very consistently spaced at 3,000. So half of 3,000, right, half of 3, 1.5. So if I know that the distance midway between each of these values is 1.5, then I can say 15 plus 1.5 is 16.5, right? So we know the midpoint. We can get it. Well, maybe I should start to write all this information down and to organize it in a table. Now, I'm going to show you if we didn't have the formula, we could write out the instructions kind of like a recipe. You can pause the video and read each one of these instructions, but add columns to your existing frequency table. In other words, you want to get organized. Add a column for the midpoint. Add a column for the frequency times the midpoint so that you can put that result, right? At the bottom of the frequency times midpoint column, make a space to sum, and then you actually are going to sum all the values. Divide by the total from step four. Right? So this is what it would look like written out. Now here's my table. Let me advance to it. Remember we started out with this midpoint, or I'm sorry, with these classes. And we also knew the frequency. So we decided there was 3 between each one of these. Half of 3, 1.5. And so if we add that to the bottom, see how I'm getting 16.5? Again, the distance between 18 and 21 is 3, half of 3, because we're looking for the midpoint, which is halfway, is 1.5. So again, add that to 18, and you'll see that you know they just advance by 1.5, because in this data set, this frequency table, that's how the midpoints, you know, how the classes were divided. So that's how our midpoints work out. Okay, so what did our formula tell us to do? It said take each of the frequencies and multiply it by its respective midpoint. 8 times 16.5 is 132. 23 times 19.5, 448.5. See how that works? Now there's no shortcut way of doing this. In other words, you can't skip the calculation. Students make mistakes when they sum up all the frequencies and sum up all the midpoints and try to multiply it in you know, five seconds or less. You really do have to take each individual frequency and multiply it by its own midpoint. Now once you get all those values and they're nicely organized in a column like this, what does our formula tell us to do? Well, it says to take each of those values, F times M, see how we've labeled the column? and sum that up. So that's what we've done. The sum is 1,845, but we're not done yet. We need to divide by lowercase n. This is a count of how many items were in the sample, how many observations. Well, if we return to the frequency, this is a count of all the observations. If we sum that up, we get 80. Divide 80 into our sum and we come up with 23.1 thousand. Now, if we had the raw data and we went back and we calculated the average, we might find that it's a little bit different, but that's okay. In this case, we are very specifically calculating the arithmetic mean of grouped data. And 
So this is how we find that value. Of course, maybe we have further questions. What if we wanted to know the standard deviation? Well, we'd have to continue on. We have a formula for that. Now, we have several formulas for standard deviation. We have standard deviation of a population, standard deviation of a sample, but this specific formula is used when the condition is that we're derived, we need that value for grouped data. Now, it looks like a complicated formula, but I want you to take a deep breath before you freak out over the math. It is not calculus. You're not taking the derivative, the integral. You're not doing anything like this. It's addition, or well, it's subtraction, it's multiplication. Yes, you have to, you know, take the square root, but, <clears throat> excuse me, but it's not necessarily hard math. It's just a lot of steps. So where will you most likely make the error? You'll make the error if you skip a step, if you don't do the steps in order. So that's how you want to double check yourself and you just want to move through these steps very methodically. The better organized you are, the better you know it's going to go, the more accurate you're going to be. So if I had to start this formula, I need the sample mean. See x bar there? Well, I calculated that in the previous step. So what am I going to have to do? I'm going to have to take the midpoint and from each and every midpoint subtract the sample mean. Once I have all of those values, I'm going to go back and for each one of those values that I subtracted, each one of those differences, I'm going to square it. Then what am I going to do? I'm going to take those squares and I'm going to multiply it by the frequency each and every time. Then what am I going to do? I'm going to sum those values. Once I've summed the values, divide by n minus 1, then take the square root. As I've explained that, you probably are saying that's a lot of steps. It's okay if you're methodical in your work, this is going to go well. As you know, I'm a big proponent of using Microsoft Excel or a spreadsheet, whatever spreadsheet you happen to use, because these are repetitive calculations. A big part of statistics is doing repetitive calculations. So Excel will help you with that. A spreadsheet software will help you do that quickly and save you from having to type a lot of steps into your calculator. So once again, I'm going to go to my chart. Remember that we just calculated x bar as being 23.1 in the previous part of the problem. So once again, I've started with my frequency table because we're doing this for grouped data. I previously calculated my midpoint. What does my formula say to do? midpoint minus x bar for each and every value. So midpoint 16.5 minus x bar 23.1. There's our value, negative 6.6. .6. Again, midpoint 19.5 minus 23.1. Here's our value, negative 3.6. You continue through that process, organizing your data as you go. Now what do we do? we square those differences. So here's the column of our differences, differences being midpoint minus x bar. Now all we do is take this negative 6.6 .6 and square it. Take negative 3.6 and square it. And see how we've labeled that column so that we understand this is the part of the formula? So there it goes. What does our formula say to do next? Take the frequency, multiply it times those square values we just calculated. 43.56 was the square, multiply that by the frequency way over here, we get this. Here's our squared value, 12.96, multiply it by the frequency once again. As we go through that, the, fin the next step, not final step, the next step of our formula says sum. So we sum those values. Then what do we do? Divide by n minus 1. n was 80. Subtract 1, of course, 79, divide, take the square root, that's our final step, and you find out that the standard deviation of this sample of grouped data is 4.403. It's a lot of steps, but if you're well organized and you follow the procedure, you'll be just fine. Good job.